Hi guys, it's John from Android Addicts, and today we're going to be doing another benchmark comparison test between the Galaxy S22 Ultra and the Galaxy S23 Ultra. So here on the left we have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and here on the right we have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So we're going to just run through the usual tests, we'll start with the Geekbench here, move on to the Antutu and then 3 Mark tests, and we'll just see how they both compare. I will also unplug these from the charger. So we're currently running the April update on these two, and I will put the details of that in the description so you can compare it with your own. The S22 only just got its April update this morning for me, so that's why this is a bit late coming out. So yeah, we'll come back once these are done, and we'll see how they both compare. Right, okay, so the three CPU benchmarks just finished. There's nothing too interesting that's happened this month. The S22 is slightly worse off, give or take half a percent to a percent here and there. I'll put the averages on the screen, obviously. And the S23 is also in the same sort of boat. It has got a very small increase in its single core, but uh, only by about half a percent. So nothing really too exciting there. So no major changes there in the CPU test. So we'll run on to the compute test now and we'll see how they do with the three of these. You can see also that the S23 was a tiny bit warmer than the S22 but it has actually now just dropped down to 31 compared to 32 here. 97% battery and 95. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see how these look at the end of the test. Okay then, so the compute test is just finished. And again, nothing really to report here compared to last month. I'll put the averages on the screen again. But uh, yeah, obviously the S23 here is absolutely dominating the S22 still with its compute benchmark here. So overall, if you were gonna compare the two side by side, there'd be no reason at all to go for the S22 Ultra in this sense, apart from the fact it's obviously currently a lot cheaper now. So let's move on to Antutu now, and we're gonna run through the benchmark and see if we can beat last month's scores at all. Okay, so the Antutu is just finished. And again, nothing really exciting here compared to last month's results. So just a very, very small increase on the S23 and a very, very small decrease on the S22. So what we're gonna do now is go through the stress test. And again, we'll see if the S22 can improve over last month, because this performance is just very poor, in my opinion, you know, you shouldn't be anywhere near 60% uh, or even 50% performance. So uh, let's test again, make sure we're on half an hour for the test. And hopefully, fingers crossed, the S22 can improve over last month's results. Let's just hope also that the S23 obviously stays in a good working order. So I'll skip to the end of this one and we'll come back once they're done. Right, so the stress test has just finished. We can see here the S22 is looking a lot better than it was last month. It's still not amazing, but it is at least managing to just about stick above the 60% performance range here. And you can see here also the cores are jumping around quite a lot still, which we've seen before obviously on the S22, so that's probably as normal as we can expect. We did have in the past though that the cores were similar to the S23 here, locked pretty much at their respective speeds, but uh, after a few updates they did seem to start doing this thing where they do jump around all over the place. But overall I'd say that's definitely an improvement over last month's results. Temperature wise as well, you can see it got up to 41 degrees, whereas the S23 here got up to 43 degrees. Now, interestingly on the S23 here, we can see that after about 24 minutes or so, the cores did a start clocking themselves down to you know try and keep things stable. Performance wise, it was doing absolutely fine, averaging I'd say around 80% performance at their proper respective speeds. So it's all very good up until about 24 minutes of the stress test where it just dropped down to about 2.5 gigahertz on the core seven there. Okay, so I've given these a bit of time to cool down and we're just gonna run the Wildlife Extreme test now. So we'll come back once they've finished and we'll compare it to last month's results. Okay, so the Wildlife Extreme test just finished and we can see here, similar to last month, that the S23 is obviously still absolutely smashing the S22 out of the water. Interestingly, the S22 stability has gone down by about 10% compared to last month's. 
But we can see here, similar to last month, the lowest loop on the S23 here is actually faster than the best loop on the S22. So there have been some big improvements here on the S23 this month compared to last month's update. So last month we saw the best loop of 2,527 and the lowest loop of 1,769. So it has improved a fair bit actually compared to last month. So that's nice to see. And I'll just go through these here if you want to have a quick look. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to the Slingshot Extreme. And again, we'll compare to last month's to see how they got on. Okay, so aside from the fact that the S23 crashed when I first started off the tests, uh, they're both finished now and some quite good results here for the S23 at least. Sadly, the S22 is losing or has gone down by about 8% compared to last month. So you can see here graphics test one is 60 and 34. Compared to last month's 73 and 40, that's quite a bit, uh, a bit worse off. And when we go to the physics tests, they're around about the same, but we've just lost a couple of frames here and there. So it's mainly just these graphics tests that it's uh, gone down on. So yeah, about an 8% loss here for the S22. Now on the other hand, the S23 here is up by nearly 27% compared to last month's scores. So that's really fantastic to see. So previously we got 87 and 46 for the first two graphics tests, and now we're at 107 and 58. And for the physics tests last month, we got 71, 39 and 21, and now at 79 and 60 and 33. So that's a massive improvement there on the physics and the graphics tests for the S23. You can see here the minimum frame rate is 29 FPS versus 19 and a maximum of 126 versus 95. So yeah, S23 is still absolutely dominating when you compare it to the good old 8 Gen 1 in the S22. Finish on 41, so it's getting a bit warmer than the S22 here, but uh, again, it's quite warm to the touch, but uh, that's what you get with that sort of performance, I guess. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please do like and subscribe. Share your scores down below. It's always interesting to see what you get as well. And if you've got any questions at all, do leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them where I can. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.